Thank you very much. Well, for more than two decades, Australians have been debating a royal conundrum. Keep the Queen as our head of state or sever ties with the monarchy and go it alone. The Republican movement has tonight launched a new campaign fund to get the divisive topic back on the agenda. In a moment, we will be joined by men representing both sides of the argument. But first, Melinda Nusifora looks back at the history of the debate. It's almost 17,000 kilometres away. The beer is warmer, the weather colder, and the pomp and ceremony a little over the top for some. Yet the Queen remains our head of state. But not if Malcolm Turnbull has his way. Long before his foray into federal politics, he was out to change Australia. People fail to understand that the Queen is not Queen of Australia. That's a title that Gough Whitlam gave it. In 1991, as a founding member of the Australian Republican movement, he was instrumental in pushing for a referendum on the issue eight years later. This is the proudest moment of my life. In 1999, opinion polls showed the majority of Australians supported a split from England but division amongst Republicans would eventually be their undoing. The movement couldn't agree on how to elect the new head of state or even what to call them. Think up something uniquely Australian. The title that springs to mind most readily to me is First Mate. The Crown would remain Australia's figurehead, with almost 55% of voters rejecting a republic. The monarchists won that royal battle and our affection for the royals have grown stronger ever since we were introduced to a commoner called Kate. Her wedding to Prince William, one of the most watched television events in Australian history. Seven million Aussies tuned in. I, William Arthur Philip Louis. Take thee, Catherine Elizabeth. Take thee, Catherine Elizabeth. To my wedded wife. To my wedded wife. With dashing Prince Harry making headlines and bump watch in full swing, Australian royal watchers have a new spring in their step. Well, joining us now is Professor David Flint, the chairman of Australians for Constitutional Monarchy, and also Professor Jeff Gallup, head of the Australian Republican Movement. Good evening to you both, gentlemen. Good evening. Good Jeff evening. Gallup, let's start with you. You've been at a function this evening for the Republican movement. So how exactly do you plan to go about making Australia a republic? Well, we're going out into the community and we're, we're talking with the community about the question of Australia and its future, the identity of our nation, the institutions that we have. And we find that when we engage uh, with the Australian people on that question, uh, the Republic uh, comes onto the agenda because currently it's a British monarch that's the head of state of Australia. And no matter how hard the Queen tries, and she certainly uh, does it very well, she can never be an Australian citizen. And so uh, we're, we're out into the community. Clubs are forming on the campuses around Australia. There's a renewed enthusiasm. And uh, we're very confident uh, we can uh, win the argument this time around. Professor Flint, we've heard what Mr Gallup has to say. If Australia does indeed become a republic, which obviously you're against, how would it change our society? What would be the problem with that? How would we notice day-to-day -day changes? Well, we just don't know what the republicans want. It's as if they were going out in the streets, marching along, saying, we want a republic and we say a politician's republic we want a republic but we haven't the foggiest idea what sort of republic we want we just don't know what they want we don't know what new flag they want we don't know how much is this, this is going to cost so until they state precisely what they have in mind what is the point about discussing this if you're going to have constitutional change you have change to improve the governance of the country to make the politicians more accountable. Mm. How will it do that? Jeff Gallup, that's somewhat a fair question. Um, how, what exactly, what is your platform? Well, our platform is that we need to set up a process by which the Australian people can take control over their own institutions. Uh, we want to involve them in the decision making about what that republic would be, what form it would take. And uh, with their involvement in that question, we're very, very confident uh, that they'll come up with a good solution and that will go to a referendum. But we're not going to fall for the old uh, two-card trick of trying to lay down what it might be now. It's not our role to do that. It's our role to define a process that the people can control uh, and then to go to a referendum. So that but you can, under you can understand why they can people now would... become head of state. 
you can understand why people would be dubious. I mean, when, when the referendum happened in, in 99, you did lose that. Um, but it came down to a question within your own people. I mean, are you guys more sorted this time? Well, there's no doubt that the, uh, the monarchists will try a divide and rule tactic uh, and uh, the Republican movement has to stay united. On whatever model comes out, they need to be united around that uh, so that we can put a, a good face to the Australian people. Last time around there was division. It was unfortunate. That's history. Uh, we're now moving on. We've got a very, very positive view about how we can involve people in this discussion. Professor Flint, the Queen is 86. Uh, to her credit, she is in excellent health, but the reality is that at some point um, that will end. How do you think Australians, what, what will we do post the Queen? Do you think that that may shape a change? The Republicans make a serious error to think that uh, the end of this reign will be the silver bullet that will deliver some sort a vague unknown republic into their laps. It just won't happen that way. There'll be enormous retrospective at the end of this reign because it's been quite extraordinary. I wouldn't suggest that the Queen's death is a silver bullet of sorts. <laughs> that's a little bit crass. But certainly that's a significant change. It, it is indeed. But the whole royal family is very popular. But what is more important, not all constitutional monarchists are royalists. They are constitutionalists. And they identify in the Constitution the Crown the oldest institution in the Constitution, which is a significant check and power, a balance on power, and they know that uh, the Crown is important not for the power it wields, but the power it denies others. In 1999, we had so long, we had, we had millions and millions of dollars of taxpayers' money. We had politicians putting their precious time, and they're not always so good on dedicating their time to government. They put all their time into this. It went on for a long time. There have been about 12 inquiries, votes and so on. Just going to cut you off there, just in the interests of full disclosure. Uh, Jeff Gallup, the royals, we've seen a, a, a pretty big interest in them. We've had the royal wedding. Prince Harry's always creating plenty of attention. And I've got to say, it's, it's fairly positive media for them. With this new generation, are you concerned that there might be a renewed love of the royal family? Well, there's a lot of interest in the royal family of Great Britain in the United States of America too. Uh, that interest won't go away, and nor will the fact that the, uh, the British played a significant role in the history of Australia go away. But uh, what will go away is having someone from another country as our head of state. So people can stay interested in, in the royal family. Of course they can. That's not an issue to us. Our issue to us is taking back control of our own system uh, to, and, and give it to our own people. And finally, Professor Flint, what do you fancy the chances of Professor Gallup and the Republican movement being successful? Well, notwithstanding the enormous amount of money, the enormous amount of media uh, argument on behalf of the Republic, the fact that two-thirds of the politicians wanted their Republic in 1999, it was defeated nationally in every state and 72% of federal electorates. Now, that was a landslide, and they know that if it were held again now, the landslide would be even bigger. That's why it's not seriously on the agenda. It may not be seriously on the agenda, but it is an issue that isn't going away anytime soon. Gentlemen, I thank both of you for your time this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Have you a very much. Weekend.